Today, when you drive by farm fields in southern Indiana, you may take for granted the clean rows of crops. Prior to 1950, this was not the case. Controlling weeds and farm crops and gardens has been a challenge since man began to cultivate crops. Before the late 1940s, fields had to have their weeds pulled by hand. In 1947, it cost at least $2 an acre to rid the cornfield of weeds. In 1947, the farming industry was revolutionized forever by a young farmer named Lloyd Hahn. Lloyd Hahn was born in rural Vandenberg County at the southern tip of Indiana on February 3rd, 1919. Lloyd and his two siblings, Ruth and Jack, grew up together in the river bottoms along the Ohio River. Hahn, since the beginning, was an inventor. He always had an engineer spirit, constantly creating things and tweaking machines to make them run better. It was this curious nature that led Hahn to experiment with a newly developed chemical. He was a neighbor of mine in Union Township. <clears throat> we lived about two miles apart, but we were in no relation. But I've known Lloyd since grade school, probably. Starting in 1946, Hahn began exploring ways to use a herbicide developed by the government during World War II to control weeds on his family farm. The herbicide was called 2,4-D. 2,4-D was originally created by the U.S. military to kill off vegetation. In the late 1940s, 2,4-D went out of style for government use and turned to commercial use. Dow Chemical was a large corporation that pushed 2,4-D for home use. In the early 1940s, a weed specialist from Purdue named O.C. Lee began experimenting with 2,4-D and giving advice to homeowners on the proper use. And with Dow selling 2,4-D to the public, Hahn contracted O.C. Lee to help him experiment on cornfields instead. In 1946, a small-scale experimentation happened on a 17-acre plot. Hahn was quoted saying, Of course everyone figured that anything powerful enough to kill a three-foot-thick tree would kill the corn as well as weeds, but I was just foolhardy enough to try it. In 1947, Hahn and his neighbors had a problem. Due to the heavy rain in the spring of 1947, weeds were able to get a head start because the fields were too wet to cultivate. But by the time farmers were able to plant, the weeds were well established. Pulling them was time consuming and expensive. Hahn expanded on his original test, still with the help of Lee, and proved himself and other farmers that spraying crops 2,4-D kills weeds and fields and is safe. Hahn said, yeah, the corn on my farm was just about strangled with big weeds. I was going to kill the corn, but I figured I might as well try spraying it first. I got myself a couple of nozzles and a pump to rig up a two-row sprayer and mounted it on my tractor. I managed to spray about 50 acres that way. After that, word spread like wildfire. Everyone wanted young Han to spray their fields, and even more asked him to make them a sprayer. And that's how it got started, and they built bigger and better, and as the years went along, you know, they, it was tremendous size of the high boys then. Uh, the controls, the hydraulic controls, and uh, Lord knows what all on them, you know, that, 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 that I didn't have, but what, what, uh, what I had did my job and did for my neighbors. It was, a, it was a great thing. To apply the chemical, Han mounted a sprayer onto a tractor and then powered it with a washing machine motor. Some farmers realized they could mount the spray unit on taller tractors to spray taller corn. This spurred the creating of an early version of the Hahn High Boy, a high clearance field sprayer. It was very successful at removing weeds. Farmers hearing of the trials came from Kentucky and Illinois to see the work of young Lloyd Hahn in Union Township. After they saw results, Hahn then started spraying his neighbor's farms by mounting the sprayer on a Willys Jeep in the late 1940s so he could get from field to field more efficiently. He, he came over to demonstrate this. We had some corn and had horse weeds in it. And uh, he said, Elmer, that was my dad, uh, I, I want to talk to you and Arva about showing you what I can spray and kill this. So he brought his sprayer over and he, he demonstrated. And, and uh, of course, we were doubtful, you know, anything that would kill weeds would kill corn. But anyway, he said, I want to check this in a day or two. And there they were all laying down, you know, I said, boy, this is a great thing. Han then eventually started selling prototypes to his neighbors, earning enough money to move the operation into a house on 315 North 9th Avenue in 1948. Then Lloyd and his brother Jack began selling to equipment sellers in the area, like Ken Standard Corporation, officially founding Han Spray Service. As well as spraying fields in 1948, Han Spray Service was contracted by the city to spray with DDT. They sprayed alleys for both mosquitoes and flies. The first official Han High Boy, though, was made in 1949 and it was powered by a Wisconsin gas engine and self-propelled with three speeds forward and then one speed reverse. It had a 100-gallon spray tank designed to travel between rows of corn without damaging the crop. Later on, the tank's size reached 1,000 gallons. 
Shortly after the booming success of the sprayer, they moved their operation to a building on the corner of Franklin and 9th, where Hahn merged with Kearney National, which was a commercial golf equipment manufacturer at the time. After the growing threat to corn, wild cucumber, a weed that strangles corn stalks and brings them to the ground, Hahn again broke the mold by introducing 245-T to the scene, a chemical brother to 24 d And this, uh, we started using uh, 245-T with it then, and that took care of the vines, <coughs> the, the shoestring vines that, as I saw some farmers say it, that you could shake one end of a quarter mile field and shake the whole end on those vines. And when we started using those chemicals with the high boys and stuff, get, when they get spread out all over the ground, you'd spray them and it killed. We don't have any vines in Union Township anymore because of, because of the high boy and and the spray. Lloyd made more advances on the Han High Boy in the early 1950s, and by 1953, one sprayer was able to spray 100 acres of a day for about four and a half dollars an acre. The chemicals not only worked on corn, but the Han High Boy spread the use of 24D and 245T down south the cotton fields, Arizona to Greece and South America. Using advertisements and visiting farms, Han was able to convince many farmers of the benefits of spraying fields. Although it was expanding, the lack of capital and aggressive borrowing from banks caused the business to be financially unstable for a long time. This, combined with Hans tweaking and experimenting, caused the high boys to take well over a month on average to be finished. So Hans started creating other products, including snowblowers, lawnmowers, wood chippers, and tillers. And in the early 1970s, Hans moved to their last location, an old Chrysler building with over 450,000 square feet at the corner of Maxwell and Stringtown where they reached a peak of over 600 employees and a payroll exceeding three and a half million. After a few acquisitions of other companies, such as Eclipse, Han's finances got too bad and they declared bankruptcy. Shortly after, they sold to a company named Toro for $1.1 million. Although Han is largely forgotten by the public because of companies like John Deere and Case IH, they revolutionized the farming industry forever. And for that, they will be known as a true successful American company and their ideas will be used by farmers all over the world 